Hi, I'm Miguel. And I'm Natalie. Welcome to our channel. Due to current circumstances, we'll be wearing our masks as we're recording on the streets. But without them, we look like this. Today we find ourselves in Torremolinos. To many of you, this uh, will be a familiar place where you've come for your summer holidays and have enjoyed the sun, the beach and even its nightlife. We're here today to give you some insight into the past of this coastal town as well as some interesting facts and general information. Are you ready? Come along! Tormelinas is a renowned destination on the Costa del Sol in Malaga, southern Spain. But when and how did it become such a popular holiday destination? Let me tell you about the meaning of its name first. Tormelinas is composed by two words. One of them is torre, which is tower. The other one is molinos, which means males. Before, Torre Molinos was known as Molinos de la Torre. This is due to two reasons. One of them, because of the tower, Pimentel Tower, which is found at the end of Calle Cuesta del Tajo, known as the Steps of Torre Molinos, just before you get to Calle San Miguel. The tower is 12 metres high, built at the beginning of the 14th century, as part of the defensive system of the Nazarenes, the last Muslim dynasty in the Iberian Peninsula to protect the industry and agriculture in the surroundings against enemy attacks. In regards to the mills, there used to be around 20 water mills from the time of the Moors that used to work off the underground streams that originated at the springs of the back of Mika's mountain range. During the course of time, the industry around the mills was lost and Tormelinas became more of a fishing village at the beginning of the 20th century until about the 1950s and 60s when it started to become more popular as a tourist destination and tourism became the driving economy of the area. Now let's talk about the first hotel in Torre Molinas. Can you see this little hill behind me? Well, it divides two of the oldest areas in Torre Molinas, El Bajondillo and La Cariuela. On the top of it, there used to be what was known as El Castillo de Santa Clara, an old fort built around 250 years ago. Which, together with the defensive coastal battery located to the west of what used to be the fort, were used to defend the bay from the frequent pirate attacks. Today, this area is a park and is known as Parque de la Batería. It's a place where you can walk around and see the cannons and bunkers from its past history. But there is more to see than just the artillery cannons in this park, such as green areas with fountains. A great big lake where you can hire a rowing boat. And this tower on which I'm now at. This park is considered to be one of the lungs of Torremolinos. Now let's find out what became of the fort. The fort became abandoned and just a little over after a hundred years that it had been built, at the end of the 19th century it was purchased and transformed into a private home by Sir George Langworthy, a British gentleman from Manchester who served in the British military. Together with his wife they made this town their home. The restored fort became known as El Castillo del Inglés. Langworthy embraced the villagers and tried to help them wherever he could. He became known as El Inglés de la Peseta. And this is because he used to give out one peseta, a silver coin, of the old Spanish currency to help those in need. Maybe they hadn't been able to go out to fish that day due to the weather. Even he used to give a silver peseta to people for reading a passage out of the Bible. In 1927, he rented out his property to Margarita Horn Taylor, also known as Mrs. Butel, who transformed this private property into a hotel, becoming the first hotel of Tormelinas. At the beginning, it was mostly British people that stayed in this hotel. But as time went by, also the jet set of the day stayed here, such as Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Ava Gardner, amongst others. Today, this hotel no longer stands, and in its place is a block of apartments. 
that still carries the name of the fort. And now let's check out La Casa de los Navajas. The Casa de los Navajas is very close to the Bajondillo beach. It was built in 1925 and it belonged to the Luque Navajas family, which had ties to the sugarcane business. The building has two floors. The first floor was where the Navajas family lived and the second floor was used as a lookout point over to the coast. The town hall acquired the building in the year 2000, restored it and later reopened it to the public. Now, weddings and ceremonies are held in the mansion and it also hosts various exhibitions, concerts and theatre performances. The interior decoration, a neo mudeja style with Mozarabic touches, is inspired in the Alhambra de Granada, a must-see historic building in Torremolinos. We are at the bottom of Cuesta del Tajo Street, commonly known as the Steps of Tormelinas, which lead up to San Miguel Street through the old fishing district of El Bajondillo. The street is lined with several restaurants and many small souvenir shops. If you want to know how many steps there are to reach to the top of the street, why don't you watch the video that we streamed earlier this week? And if you know the answer, leave us a comment below. Now, if you want to avoid using the steps, for the price of 50 cents, you can always take the lift. If you're going up, you will take the lift located at Plaza de los Tajillos, taking you closer to San Miguel Street. But if you're going down, you will take the lift located at Plaza del Panorama, taking you to the Bajondillo Beach area. The San Miguel Parish Church is located at the top of the Cuesta del Tajo Street and is the oldest church in Torremolinos. It was named like that after the saint patron of this town. It was built in 1718 in a neoclassical style but later renovated in 1896. Life in Torremolinos revolves around San Miguel Street, as it is one of the busiest pedestrian streets in the municipality. Now, it is a commercial axis of Torremolinos, full of shops and various different bars and restaurants, but it wasn't always like that. And that is because back in the days, before the growth in tourism began in the late 1950s, this all used to belong to a fishing village. La Plaza de la Nogalera, or the Nogalera Square, is an open space surrounded by shops and bars. Here, it is where different kind of events take place. Also, and most importantly, it is where you will find the train station. Another square to visit and browse around is Plaza Costa del Sol, located at the top of San Miguel Street. This area used to be crossed by the town's main road, but it has recently been transformed into a pedestrian area, with plenty of benches to take a break on, shops and eating places. Thank you for watching, we hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share, and subscribe. Until next time, take care and God bless. Bye.